Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Acolyte video. So today we're going to be talking about some updates, but the one character, the one sociopath who's been garnering all the attention of the fandom is Kiadi Mundi. And something I find really hilarious is that did you know Hasbro kept delaying the Attack of the Clones Black series figure of him? And by mere coincidence, it just so happens the figure releases the same week he appears in the Acolyte. It's almost as if the Force works in mysterious ways, and somehow debate about Conehead over here has been dividing the fandom. Between the debates about his canon age, and the fact that the Acolyte undermines what he goes on to say a hundred years later in The Phantom Menace, how he may have been part of a cover-up, any time this guy's been mentioned this week, it's been with a lot of fury. But you know, my dear friends, I think we're all focusing on the wrong thing. Have we considered that in a very cheeky, and I would say accidental fashion, they've also reframed something he says in Revenge of the Sith. You all know the meme, when Kiadi Mundi as a hologram says, what about the droid attack on the Wookiees? Is it possible in that moment he felt bad because a hundred years prior, the Jedi let another Wookiee die, that time one of their own? In a really strange way, Mundi's legacy has been tied to Wookiees ever since the iconic line in episode three, with little else to go off as such a minor character on the Jedi Council back then. Aside from various tales told in Star Wars Legends and the comics, that line became Mundi's most memorable contribution to the Star Wars universe. And I don't know if you noticed this, he was such a prick, J.J. Abrams didn't even consider making him one of the Force voices in The Rise of Skywalker, the ones that talked to Rey. Heck, even Adi Galia got one. Given the fact Mundi is now known for Sith cover-ups, he wouldn't have encouraged Rey to fight Palpatine, but instead he would have been like, we let Smilo Ren and his master go and then we allowed the Rise of Sidious. But no, the Sith have been extinct for millennia. I'm just being silly, but look. Whether Leslie Headland intended this or not, or if it's just a funny coincidence, after Kalnaka's death, the line he speaks later in the timeline in Revenge of the Sith is recontextualized. He knew the Jedi party was going to go far, and soon he's going to find out Kalnaka never made it back. So, was Kalnaka on his mind when he asked about the droid attack on the Wookiees? So I would say his lack of willingness to dive further into Kalnaka's death is going to contribute to the Jedi overlooking a lot of the Sith's secret presence, even if they don't know it's the Sith. But some fans say all of the Jedi who went to Kofar kind of have to die, unless they don't suspect it's the work of an undercover Sith. They did imply it could be another Force faction, but ultimately Leslie Ellen confirmed the show is leading to the rise of the Sith, the Sith who I believe the helmeted guy is the apprentice of. Now here's the question, is the infamous hate against Kiadi Mundi justified in the Star Wars fandom? I would say to an extent, he never displayed much humanity or humility. He was a very rigid, arrogant, close-minded Jedi, one who his squad, the 21st Nova Corps, considered selfish, and whose tactics always put them in danger instead of himself. Here is a friend reciting the thoughts of Mundi's clone commander Bakara moments after he and his men executed Order 66. I hesitated for a moment when I received Order 66. Did I feel betrayed? You bet I did. I thought of all my men who died under Kiadi Mundi's command, and if I'd known then that he and his buddies were gearing up to do the Separatist work for them and overthrow the government, I'd have shot him as a traitor a lot earlier. He betrayed the trust of every one of us. He was someone stuck in his ways, skeptical about the existence of Darth Sidious despite all the evidence, and his actions during the Clone Wars were often criticised for being too militant, too aggressive, and contentious at best. Not to mention in Legends, he was a terrible father and husband to multiple wives, and he was allowed to do this, despite the Jedi Order's ban on marriage, due to his species the Sarean's lower birth rates, but he would happily betray anyone he knew and would hang them out to dry. I have a hunch we're going to see him again in this series before the season ends, so I'm waiting to see how they're going to connect it all together, tie it together, make it coherent, and hopefully provide an adequate reason to include him in the show, I think it was very, very unnecessary, and hopefully Leslie can justify it. But in other Akali news, my dear friends, we need to talk about Jackie Lon. This is a very unique scenario. I suspected, after the most recent episode, episode 4, but also after the first two episodes, that Jackie and Osha were going to have something of a flirtatious romance. Daphne Keen says Jackie is 18, and she's been hinting for a long time there was going to be something between these two. But now she has flat out confirmed it. Considering the fact she's a by the book Jedi Padawan, this creates an interesting dilemma in terms of attachments. 
Is the acolyte going to break an important George Lucas principle? That is the question. We've seen Jedi have attachments, whether it's Obi-Wan, Anakin, but Jackie is a bit different, a young Padawan with aspirations of being part of the Order, following Jedi code, is falling in love. Is she gonna have to make an important decision? Daphne Keen has revealed a key subtext in the fourth episode of The Leslie Edlund Show, one that suggests her character Jackie Lon, half deal and half human, is close to breaking a major rule of the Jedi code. Some have interpreted her connection to Osha as mere interest in Master Soul's former Padawan, but Daphne Keen said this, I think for Jackie it's very confusing, because as a Jedi, you're not allowed to have feelings for other people. It's her first real experience for those kinds of feelings, and almost the guilt and confusion that comes with it, she says. She is such a controlled, self-judging, perfect student, that I think it's also self-hatred that comes from having those feelings and that kind of constriction. So in a sense, Leslie Ellen is showing that while a lot of Jedi did have feelings, and I'm talking about romantically like Obi-Wan with Duchess Satine, it does have a conflict with the code of the Jedi Order, and it plays into Hedlund wanting to show us the cruelty of the Jedi. But Daphne describes a magnetism, an inevitable magnetism, and what she's saying is that it's really to show us that while Padawans struggle with various things, including attachments, often in the form of their families, Obi-Wan speaks about a long-lost brother, Anakin struggled with his mum Shmi, but this is really new for Jackie. This is a Padawan who was absolutely by the book. No tinge of deviating from the Jedi Code, and suddenly she says she finds herself in this position where there is a magnetism she cannot deny. And crucially, typically for Jedi, something alluded to in Attack of the Clones is they must differentiate between selfish attachment and selfless love, a love for the greater good. And I think to this extent, Jackie represents the constant struggle of balance every member of the Jedi Order has to find. And sometimes, it really is a struggle. Now, Daphne Keen refused to confirm if this is going to remain a subtext, or whether it is going to be explored further and concretely. I think we're probably just gonna have to wait and see. But did you know, my dear friends, we also have some new character posters, which do reveal some major things. For one thing, did you know Torbin used a yellow lightsaber before his death? I've always said Disney Star Wars has created too many characters who use a yellow lightsaber, and Torbin is another. And we also have some of the villains like Chimia, and a bit of a description for him too. I think he's Milo Ren, not the Sith Lord, but the Acolyte. A couple of days to go, let me know your thoughts on everything we spoke about in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and may the Force be with you, always.